Hello, everyone, and welcome back to The Legend of Dragoon right here on Missile Online. I don't... <laughs> That's me, that's my channel. Thank you guys so much for clicking on yet another Legend of Dragoon video. This is episode 27, 28, I don't really know. Uh, but I, I thank you so much for watching and a special thank you to those watching on the premieres of these episodes every Monday, Wednesday, Friday at 2 p.m. Eastern. Uh, I very much enjoy talking to you guys in that, in those chats, so thank you. Uh, in the last episode, we started, we ended disc two, and then uh, Shauna and Dark kissed. It was magical. And now we're on disc three, and we are in the continent of Milisezu, where we found out that a young boy, Tio, and his white wolf, Kamui, have gone, uh, Kamui has gone crazy, apparently, and is killing everybody. And Tio has disappeared. Uh, so we're heading into the evergreen forest right now to see if we can find them. Uh, but before we do that, I want to point out a little bit of this world map because this is the first time that we can actually see it. You can actually see these ruins right above Evergreen Forest. There's also another forest you can kind of see over there with like a, a little mountain-esque thing in the back there. Uh, very weird. You can kind of tell the texture of it. You can see a city right over there and then even further is like that big ice block. So that's kind of your first hint at what is going on here on the continent of Milisezu. Now, we also did a very long trek in the last episode where we went and got uh, the uh, the scene with Lavitz's mom that we couldn't have seen before. Kongol is Dragoon level 3. Albert is Dragoon level 4. I thought I would also just look at people's additions just to give you an idea of where we're at. Uh, I have been able to do Rose's Demon Dance 10 times. And let me tell you, uh, uh, I've, I've done it hundreds of times now and I have gotten 10 of them. Uh, it's very hard. Uh, Alberts is getting that gust of wind dance up just slowly but surely. And, uh, Kongul has learned the new edition, Inferno, uh, which we'll go ahead and equip and throw on him right now so he can actually start using his, uh, second to last edition that he gets in the entire game, which is actually pretty absurd. This is going to be my party going into the Evergreen Forest, uh, because there is a boss fight coming up in here where element doesn't really matter. Uh, and we're just gonna, we're just gonna physically attack it. We could make the fight way easier, but I see this as a, an opportunity to use people that I would normally never use in a boss battle. So, uh, that's what we're gonna do. So, first things first, if we head up this way, we can actually see that there is a safe point here, uh, with, uh, some additional paths. But we don't want to go there just yet. We're gonna go this way first. And as soon as we get into a random encounter, I can actually start telling you a little bit about the enemies that we will find here in the Evergreen Forest. Also, look at the flying rat just sitting in the tree. It's not a monkey. It's actually called a flying rat. Uh, right there, we can pick up a D-Stone amulet, which we also could have bought in Fernie, but there's no real reason for it. And now we can jump into some of the enemies that we will find in this area, depending on what we see first. Gnarly. So we actually get into a battle with a flying rat, which is a wind elemental. Uh, and we get into a battle with a forest runner, which is also wind elemental. Uh, these are very, very easy enemies. I'm not that worried about it. The forest runner can do some annoying stuff. It can cast be uh, bewitching and it can also dispirit people, which can be super annoying. It has 360 health, whereas the flying rat has 260. It's a very, very, very simple fight. Uh, and uh, it, these most of these guys are absolutely nothing. And of course, as I say that, they it immediately bewitch Albert. Perfect. Let's go ahead and see if we can get. Oh, almost got Kongol's Inferno. I actually forgot how to do that. What's kind of cool about bewitchment, which I don't think I've talked about in any other video, is that if you kill the enemy that bewitched them or wooed them in this case, the bewitchment will automatically break, which is pretty cool. And we can also one-shot the flying rats. Very nice. Now those enemies, the forest runner also has an 8% chance of dropping a recovery ball, and the flying rat has an 8% chance of dropping an angel's prayer. Uh, not something we really want to use. Now I also just realized that I still have the heat blade equipped, so I'm going to go ahead and equip the falcon. Uh, instead on Mr. Dart here. And I think other than that, he's looking pretty good. The bandit's ring is just going to make him a little bit faster. Uh, and, and yeah, we don't, we don't really need to use anything else here, right? Cool. We do have the combat shoes if we wanted to equip those. I ended up buying those just because we didn't have any in our inventory yet in the last episode of Legend of Dragon. Anyways, we want to head up here. We want to go this way first because there's actually an item that we can pick up. It's a dead end, but it does contain a body purifier. 
and I'm me, so we need to open every chest. We'll go ahead and do this and grab the body purifier. Something else I want to mention about where we are right now, the Evergreen Forest. This place kind of acts as a uh, an in-between. We're going to be traversing the Evergreen Forest a ton of times here on Just 3 while we're going to all of the different areas. Right now, there's only one real way that we can go. Uh, but, oh, it's Tio. But first, before we rescue Tio, I can show you the two new enemy, or one new enemy here. The Moss Dresser, which is an Earth Elemental, 300 health, and does have an 8% chance of dropping a Healing Fog, which uh, restores all of the health of a party member, which is pretty nice. Almost can kill it in one hit. Again, 300 health, so it shouldn't be too bad. They do have the ability to power up and can attack you, but it's not that big of a deal. These guys will go down pretty easily. Especially when you nail a gust of wind dance. There we go! Our first Inferno from Kongle. He's like, yeah, yeah, I Inferno'd, baby. But back to the reason why we're here. Tio, what's going on, man? Hey, hey, Tio! Oh, jeez, Louise. Help! He'll be killed! Huh? Oh! This is Kamui? Everybody's surrounded! Finally, I found it! Oh, I'll get him, and I'll get the five times larger prize! Let me kill it! Stop it! Tio, you are all right! Everybody, listen, it was not Kamui's fault! It was a different monster that attacked Fa! Tio, leave Kamui! No way! Because Kamui protected Fa, so I'll protect Kamui this time! Please, don't kill Kamui. Dio, it's no longer the Kamui you knew. Many other people were attacked by it. Guys, let's grab Tio first. Stop it! Whoa, oh jeez, oh! Oh, he stopped, so let's Tio on his back. Uh, yeah! Dio, pursue them. Okay, but wait. <clears throat> the wolf called Kamui. They say it used to be Tio's. I wonder why it became savage. I don't know. The only thing we know is that the wolf is a menace in the forest now. Do we know that though? Do we know that or are we being lied to? Anyways, we want to head this way because there are items that we can get. Hello. Uh, ooh, what do we have here? It's a petrifier, which you can go ahead and grab. And also, I want to show that we can't go this way. This way is filled with monsters and is dangerous. Take another path, okay? We can't go that way just yet, but we can go up here. Whoa. Hello? What is this map? Looks like we can't actually go anywhere, though. Interesting. I just wanted to show this map. I actually think it's it's cool. Anyways, that leads... Well, you'll see. Dear viewer, you'll see. So if we run all the way back here, we can go around this way. And then we have to go this way up here. It can kind of get confusing, but once you understand the layout of the Evergreen Forest, it's actually, well, it's actually not confusing at all. Ah, here we go. A new enemy. This is the Dark Elf enemy, uh, which can be super annoying. It has the Petrify. This is the one that can Petrify with Petrify Arrow. So we want to make sure that we focus down the Dark Elf first, which I think is very interesting that it's like an actual humanoid, potentially smart uh, random encounter that you find. There's Petrifying Arrow goes out on Kongle, so we won't be able to do Inferno, which kind of stinks. Dark Element from Dark Elf, and also has a chance of dropping a Depetrifier, which we did pick one up, and we could theoretically use it just to get rid of it. Uh, it's just kind of hanging out in our inventory. We, Like I said, we don't need it. Depetrifier breaks after combat, and as, as far as I'm concerned, I don't think there's really many bosses that it would be an issue. And also, don't forget that somebody could just pop special, right? And, uh, well, actually, no, they couldn't because Kongo's not maxed out. Now, the Dark Elf also has another thing that we've seen before called Detonate Arrow, and that is a magic in it. Uh, oh, look at that. Dart has leveled up. Level 25. All right. Uh, the Dark Elf also has Detonate Arrow, which attacks everybody for pretty high magic damage. So the real place that we want to go right now is to Deningrad. Kamui is actually like a side quest. We don't need to do it to progress the story at all. Uh, but obviously we're not gonna we're not gonna skip out on on bosses, right? Something I will say though is you don't have to do it right now either. So if you are struggling or your characters just aren't that high level, 
Uh, you can do it after the next area where we can get some new weapons. Um, but we're going to do it right now just because I think it's fun to do a hard boss fight. It's off limits from here. Nobody's allowed to go in. Hmm, but there's a chest there. But we can't go that way just yet. That way it leads to yet another area. Like I said, Evergreen Forest really is just a, 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 a piece that we have to go through every time we want to go anywhere. Like the prairie way back on disc one. Ah, look, it's Kamui. Now, here's what I suggest. Equipping your, whatever your most powerful additions are, you're really going to want those in this fight. Um, which, obviously, we're, we're pretty good on that front. Uh, except for, we'll put Pursuit on Kongo, just because Inferno uh, isn't that isn't that great. And uh, let's, let's go forward. Oh, jeez. Maybe we should retreat? No, no, no. We should advance. Go home. Kamui's not bad. Go home. Hmm. We met Fa. Fa's worried about you. Fa is... It's true. Fa doesn't talk anymore since you disappeared, Tio. It's because she really cares about you. Fa cares that much about me? Fa needs you. But... What about Kamui? He's going to be killed if I don't protect him. That's right. <laughs> you pretended to not be interested, but you came back for the prize, right? But I won't let you. I'll finish the beast. Tio, come here. It's too late for Kamui. Don't come here. Oh, no. Oh. Uh, help. Dart, we have to let let Kamui stop? What? We have to let Kamui stop. Stop it! This, my friends, is the battle against Kamui. Bring in Kongol uh, and Albert into this because they are very, very strong physically and uh, we don't really need elements here, so no problemo. The physical defense on Kamui is 100, so that's better than its magic defense at 150. Also, it has 4,000 health, so I would recommend right off the bat... Oh, jeez. Uh, right off the bat, we're actually going to use a speed up on... We're going to use a speed up on Albert. Perfect. We want to buff up our party as much as possible. Watch how much damage our dear friend Albert is able to do here to Kamui. Again, 4,000 health, so this is going to be a little bit of a long battle. 399 damage out of Albert. Probably not the best character to go with in this situation. 232 damage with its basic attack. That is pretty substantial, my friends. Again, if you are having difficulties with this, I recommend uh, using one of the Dragoons that can use healing magic or anything like that. But with how much Albert is already getting to attack, we've only been attacked once by Kamui. Let's see how much damage our dear friend Kongo is able to do. 342, so we did use the speed up on the right character. That's for gosh darn true. What? What did I just say? Let's see how much damage to Kongo, who has very high physical defense. Only 122, so I think this battle isn't going to be as bad as I was potentially thinking it was going to be. Now, of course, you wouldn't be the super wrong to transform into a Dragoon, especially since we have special available to us and we could use Albert's Rose Storm just to uh, take 50% less damage. Oops, I messed up which obviously would be super useful on this fight, considering how much damage Kamui can actually do to you. Lucky for us, it is only basic attack and we have not seen any of its really, really big attacks and we already have them into yellow health. But again, this is a wonderful time to get some additions from these guys and of course, 8,000 experience when we actually defeat him. All right, here we go. This is the big guns. This is Spirit Wolf. Watch how much damage this does to Kongo. 633 damage done to our dear boy. That is a lot of damage, my friends. Already into the red health. Again, if you are struggling, I would recommend popping that special. Everybody's ready for it at this point. But this really isn't too bad of a fight. Really only has three attacks. Kind of a side boss. Not necessary to do. 
And we've gotten actually very, very lucky in this fight. He could potentially use the Spirit Wolf, the attack where he jumps on top of the tree, over and over and over. But lucky for us, we defeated him, got some addition progress. There we go. 8,000 experience to everybody in our party. Well, not every... You, 8,000 divided by everybody in our party. And we also get the Darkness Stone, which uh, lowers the damage done by darkness attacks to those who have it equipped by 50%. Kongle and Albert leveled up, and Shauna in the reserves, and Rose and Hatchel and Miru. Nice! Kamui, don't die. I... I may be contradicting myself. But I cannot leave this like that. White Silver Dragon, please save Kamui. Kamui? Kamui is becoming himself again. Kamui! I'm glad. The white silver dragon healed the savage soul that changed Kamui. Tio, go back to Fa and show her you're fine. Kamui can go back with him, can't he? Hmm. It seems he's not going to harm people anymore. Fine. If anything happens, I'll take responsibility. It will be the best for Tio and Fa. Tio, let's go home. Everybody's worried about you. Okay. Thank you, miss. Hey, you're very welcome. That was so nice of us. So let me go ahead and show you the new item that we just got, which is, of course, the Darkness Stone. Which, oops. Which we can go ahead and show it here in our, in our list. Darkness Stone reduces damage from darkness-based attacks by half, just like I said it did. So just to show you that I wasn't lying. There's actually nothing that we can get over this way. Uh, I know that tree looks like potentially there's something there, but there's not. Makes me kind of sad that there's nothing there, but there isn't. Anyways, uh, now we want to head to Diningrad, uh, which is the capital of Milosezu, by heading to this southern path here. But instead, we're going to go all the way back to Fernie, the water city, to get our reward for defeating Kamui. Ah, and here we go. This is actually a pretty rare encounter. This, my friends, is the Wounded Bear, one of the strongest enemies that you can find in here. It is an earth elemental. Of course, everybody's pretty low, so potentially we could die to this. Uh, but it is an earth elemental with 560 health. You will typically only ever encounter it alone. Let's see how much damage it actually does here. Quite a bit, 176 with just its basic attack. Dart somehow getting a turn before anybody else in our party does. That's the problem with rocking with Kongo and Albert, is uh, they slow, dude. They real slow. Imagine that Lena's fight with just these two. Whew. Damn, didn't even get my Gust of Wind Tights. The Wounded Bear has an 8% chance to drop the attack ball. It gives 96 experience, which isn't much. Uh, and uh, it will be. It does have the ability to use something called Roar, which will do magic damage to you and also will afflict uh, fear status on you. So keep that in mind if you do end up coming up against them. I'm also going to go ahead and throw the Inferno Edition back onto Kongo because he is not using that. I'll probably go ahead and stay at an inn as well once we get back to Fernie. As soon as we can enter, we see, look at Tio and Kamui. Goody, goody, gumdrop. Kamui is back to normal. I can be with him again. I was attacked by a monster. Kamui, help me. Kamui's not bad. Everybody tried to kill Kamui. I was scared of everybody more than the monsters. We did it, guys. We saved the day. Fernie. The little girl, uh, little girl Fa and Fernie. What was I trying to say there? The little girl, Fer uh, oh my, you know what? I'm done. I'm done trying to say it. I'm done. That's it. Anyways, we want to head back to the, the front uh, because we we know where the this is the Night Commander's house is, but we can't get there right now, right? I guess we could. We could go to the inn and then do it, which we need to do anyways because we need to rest. So let's go ahead and just go to the hotel. There we go. Only 25 gold and we're fully rested. Nice. We are still hurting from the from the uh, from the Kamui fight. So pretty nice to grab that that easily. 
And of course, we'll just run over to the knight's house, the resident knights. And get our 500 golds. Now, this is, uh, I guess, missable. You could just not come and do this. Oh, the place where I was kicked still hurts. It wasn't a normal wolf. Five times the usual price was not enough, right? What about this guy, Bulgus? Ugh, I was so close to getting five times the usual price. Damn, I can't stand it. Oh, and then we can talk to the resident knights. Welcome. Here is the five times larger prize, as I promised. I'm not interested in... Did you hear the truth about the incident from Fa? You saved not only Kamui, but us too. This is an expression of thanks from all of us. Please take it. And we got 500G. It was a bad experience for Kamui and Tio, but everything is settled now. See, we're awesome. Now, again, you did not need to do the Kamui fight right now. You could have waited until... Yeah, I guess I'll say it in a future episode because I don't want to spoil anything, but there's a there's a point where we'll head back to Dinengrad uh, after some pretty cool events. That w would be the point of no return. That would be the last time that you could do this side quest and defeat Kamui and, uh, and, and, and get that 500G and the Darkness Stone, both of which are, are very good. The Darkness Stone is actually going to be useful in a, uh, a strategy that we have for a certain boss fight way later in the series. Now that we're done with that, we got our reward. We want to head back to the Evergreen Forest and all the way back to that trail that leads to Dinengrad. Which is this way. I always almost go, go, go right instead of left there. But this path is actually very, very simple. It just looks confusing at first. In fact, we might get through the whole area with only one random encounter that's sweet and we'll just continue up here now if there's anything that you want to do especially with rose or miru at this time i would recommend doing it look at the lake in the background oh my god beautiful wait what's going on what's up please go ahead i remember i have some important errand to do Hey, wait! I'll catch up with you soon. Look for Lloyd in the meantime. Uh... She is mysterious, as always. What's Miru doing? Hello? Miru? Uh, <laughs> uh, I now remember I have an errand too, so... You're not going to tell us the reason either, Miru. Hmm. I'm just visiting my parents, that's all. That's all? You should have said so. I will miss you, Miru. Hey, I'll be back soon. See ya. Uh... It's typical of Miru. Let's move on. Is it typical of Miru? Anyways, this is one of the reasons why I've had Kongo and Albert in the party is just because I feel like, I feel like uh, there's no, you know, I didn't want to have Miru in because she leaves and Rose leaves. So that's why I'm rocking these guys at the moment. But even though we've lost Miru and Rose, the story must go on. We must press on to Dinengrad by heading out. That was the last map of Evergreen Forest. So it's actually not that bad. Now, right here, you can actually find, so this in front of us is Dinengrad, but there is a unique monster that we can actually discover right here on this road. Which is this one right here, the Red Bird. One of very few remaining unique monsters that we actually have left in the game. Now, you'll notice that my party's actually different. I went ahead and I switched Shauna and Hatchel in right away, just so that uh, we would have uh, a faster party uh, in this in this battle, actually. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to use uh, speed up on... I, I Probably on Shauna here being the fastest. This is another monster that's similar to the treasure jar that we fought before uh, in that you have to do magic damage to it. It, it is immune to physical damage. So that means we're going to have all of these guys transform into dragoons. We'll use the speed up on Shauna. First turn, second turn, Hashel's going to transform. He's going to use magic attack. And then uh, whoever the next turn is, is going to also transform into a dragoon. Do some magic. 
And then the third person, this is the strategy anyways, is going to go ahead and use, uh, also, can we just, can we just see the Violet Dragon? No, 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 I need the MP, I need the MP. We'll use Atomic Mind, the base, the base version of all of, all of these magics. We'll go ahead and use Dart to transform into a Dragoon. My hope is that Shauna will have the next turn. So we'll be able to get a flame shot out from Dart and then a magic Seek Stone from Shauna. And then this, this is going to be a GG. Now, our flame shot unfortunately did miss. So this is going to be a little bit rough. But we'll use the magic Seek Stone from Shauna here. Which will stop it from running away. There's its first, cannot move. Now, unfortunately, we missed yet again. So this thing has only taken one point of damage. But we'll go ahead and transform Shauna into a Dragoon now as well. Two more damage to the red bird, and we will win. That was its second cannot move. Shauna, unfortunately, has to use star children. She doesn't have, uh, like, a baseline. That's the only one that she has outside of her big dragon that actually does damage. One more hit, and the red bird will be ours. That was its final cannot move. Come on, Hatchel. Bring it home for us with Atomic Mind. No, it missed! Dart's flame shot cannot miss here. It will run away if this misses. Come on, baby, don't miss. Yes! And Redbird goes down. God, that fight took so long. Over 12 minutes just to do that. Obviously, we have to do all the animations of the Dragoons, but that's okay. Because when you win, you will get a Phoenix Bloom, which is a headpiece. And, of course, a thousand gold for that fight, which is very good. Of course, there's no XP, but a thousand gold and a Phoenix Bloom? Come on! Now, if we go into our inventory, we can actually check out Phoenix Bloom and see... What? Is this any good? Phoenix Bloom. There we go. Avoids bewitching, confusion, fear, and dispiriting. What? It's basically like a ribbon. Super strong uh, and will be useful in uh, some fights. Uh, overall, though, you're probably not going to use it. You're going to use something like the Legend Cask or, or the Magical Hat or the Jeweled Crown. But still, uh, picking that up is very, very good. And I recommend uh, having enough for everybody at some point. Because, again, I'm a completionist. Anyways, in the next episode, we will head here to the Crystal Palace in Dinengrad. Now, you've heard of the Black Castle in Kazaz. You've heard of Bale. You've heard of the Twin Castle in Fletz. None of those rival the Crystal Palace in Dinengrad. This place is phenomenal. I can't wait to show you guys in the next episode of The Legend of Dragoon. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this episode. We d we completed the side quest of Kamui. I showed you the one of the last of, of... There's only two more unique monsters that I haven't shown you guys after this, which is pretty crazy. One of which is super useful for XP grinding. Uh, but I'm very excited that I was able to show you this. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, and uh, uh, a special shout out to all of you watching in the premiere every Monday, Wednesday, Friday at 2 p.m. Eastern. Sincerely appreciate it. Thank you guys so much. And remember, never give up. Never surrender to Kamui the White Wolf. Wait, uh, I did that one already. Yeah, it's fine.